Quantum uh, mechanics is by now a well-established branch of science. Um, it describes the laws uh, of the, our world at a kind of microscopic length scales. And it has been developed at the turn of the 20th century uh, and applied to a wide variety of physical systems. Um, by now, uh, I would say the, um, the application, uh, the, the kind of the use of quantum mechanics to describe the properties of the micro world is um, uh, well established. While scientists still try to uh, push the frontiers of understanding of uh, subatomic particles um, and you know uncover kind of new underlying laws of physics, I would say that um, in terms of, for example, understanding of matter at the atomic scale, the job is mostly done. So what? Uh, scientists and engineers are now trying to do is to take uh, advantage of this knowledge and not only uh, kind of describe and understand the matter of an atomic scale but also try to control, engineer and apply it to, um, to basically realize new devices and new applications. One of the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics, which is a key to many of uh, those applications, is a superposition principle. So, uh, in quantum mechanics, one particle can be uh, in superposition of two states at the same time. So, in simple words, it can be at two places at the same time. Uh, so, in principle, you know, the object. Uh, the big microscopic objects, such as, for example, a table, can also be uh, at two places at the same time. It can be in superposition, uh, as scientists say, in a coherent superposition of two states at the same time. So the state of this kind is not prohibited by the uh, laws of quantum mechanics. And while for the uh, small scale systems, like, for example, a single electron, this existence of these superpositions have been established in many experiments uh, for macroscopic objects. Uh, of course, the superpositions do not exist in a real life world. So the reason for that is because these superpositions of this kind of macroscopic superposition states uh, of the kind uh, that I just um, described uh, are extremely fragile. Anything which uh, basically can uh, disturb or if, if you want to, to measure the position of you know, such a superposition, immediately collapses the state or basically it forces the system to be in one state or another. And this superposition principle is the basis for the new uh, extremely active field of quantum science and engineering where scientists are trying to uh, implement, realize experimentally uh, these quantum superpositions of on larger and larger scale and uh, not only to experiment with such systems but also to use them for different applications. So the kinds of applications uh, that people are exploring uh, uh, is, uh, uh, you know, form a very diverse set. One most known example is, of course, uh, a quantum computer. So a quantum computer uh, can be potentially uh, extremely powerful uh, because um, uh, you can uh, encode a lot of information in this kind of superposition state. You can basically create the state of uh, a quantum computer, which you know encode, encodes you know multiple bits of classical information at once. So, needless to say, uh, this state 
it can be very interesting from the point of view of scientists because it basically represents a new state of matter. But at the same time, uh, you know, potentially there are examples, there are several examples of specific algorithms where um, quantum computer can outperform uh, the uh, basically any existing or any conceivable quant classical computer possible. Quantum computer, in particular at this large scale, is very difficult to implement. And the reason why this is the case is precisely the reason why we don't see in everyday, in everyday life this kind of you know, superpositions of, for example, uh, tables you know, sitting in different rooms at the same time. However, even uh, smaller scale quantum uh, computers could be used for uh, uh, interesting applications. So one example um, of such an application is uh, the so-called quantum network or quantum internet. So what you can do is basically is, is use um, uh, relatively small scale quantum computers to, for example, enable the nodes of this network to communicate each other in a very uh, fast and also um, very secure kind of fa fashion. So you can basically you know, use the laws of quantum mechanics to enable uh, secure transmission of information. Uh, the reason why uh, this security can take place can be traced back to the point of, uh, of view that if you have a superposition, then any kind of perturbation, any attempt to measure it will immediately collapse it. So if, everyone, if anyone is trying to basically uh, interfere with the secure network, this interference can be immediately detected. Another uh, important direction uh, is related to um, realization of new and understanding uh, of new quantum materials. So I was already remarked that when you know quantum computer performs uh, its operation in the process of its computation, it creates the states of matter which are extremely unique and unusual. So one can take advantage of these kind of properties to basically design the new types of quantum materials and quantum matter with the properties which do not exist in the um, natural world. These states are extremely interesting uh, and it's actually extremely challenging to understand and quantify it because you know they're very unusual. They contain the correlations, which are very difficult to um, uh, measure using conventional techniques. So this kind of work, which is taking place in this field, might enable us to gain unique insights into properties of this kind of materials, and perhaps design new practical materials, such as, for instance, um, high-temperature superconductors, which uh, can conduct electricity without losses even under ambient conditions at room temperature. One final uh, example that I would like to give is uh, the work uh, involving quantum sensors. As I already mentioned, these quantum superpositions, uh, the underlying principle of quantum mechanics, are extremely fragile. And of course, this fragility is a main challenge for realization of quantum computers, but you can turn the tables around and ask a question whether you can use the sensitivity of quantum superpositions to the external perturbation to design novel kind of sensing or imaging techniques. So it turns out that such sensors can indeed be uh, developed and realized. Um, uh, some of these kind of sensors are already around, so the world's best atomic clocks are in fact uh, making use of such superpositions, but it turns out that this, uh, the family of these kind of sensors can be extended uh, significantly um, going all the way down to the uh, uh, novel techniques for, for example, biological imaging or you know, imaging of living systems at the cellular or subcellular level. So this is the kind of work uh, which is now uh, going on in this field. This is an extremely exciting uh, field and uh, some applications might be around the corner. Uh, so among the most uh, significant 
intellectual challenges in these fields is a question of how big can be the you know, the system size such that the laws of quantum mechanics would still apply. You can formulate this question in different ways. For example, you could ask, so given that we have a, you know, a given size of the system, for example, a quantum computer, how long can it maintain its quantum mechanical coherent state? Or alternatively, you can ask uh, it differently and ask, for example, if you have a quantum material, at what length scale or at what temperatures can this material still feature quantum correlations? So these kind of questions are very interesting and very fundamental uh, to the science of what we are trying to uh, explore, but also they you know, have some practical relevance. They are important for some specific applications. One last uh, uh, thing that I would like to mention is, um, is what I would say the um, application question or application challenge. Uh, that is, given that we now have in the lab some relatively small scale quantum systems, or if you want small scale quantum computers, which we can control, manipulate and measure, can this small scale system enable new capabilities, both in science and also in terms of applications in the real world. So this is also another important question.